Hi, this is Mark. On today's R&D Corner, we're going to teach you how to MIG weld, show you a real world application by repairing this door skin here. What we're going to do is show you the performance and value of these units and how they can pay for themselves in the first job. So let's get started. All right, before we get into repairing that door, I'll teach you how to MIG weld real quick. First thing, comfortable position. Second is holding your torch. I'm right-handed, your left-handed would be the opposite here. What you want to do is get your left hand, almost like you're holding a pool cue. This thing's going to steady your gun, and it's going to keep that correct work distance from your piece. That steady hand there will keep you at a nice steady movement here. The other thing, your ground clamp. What you want to do is try and get that as close as possible to the weld area. Machine setup, very easy. Inside the door here, we have your chart. Come across the top to your material, you'll see 20 gauge. The setting is voltage on E, wire speed on four. Now what I like doing on the sheet metal is just run a little bit hotter. I'll just take it up another notch on the voltage there. All right, the first thing you wanna do, cut the wire so you got about a quarter inch stick out. Now we're gonna get in position like we talked about before. Your free hand is your steady rest. Get the torch down there and what we're gonna do is a spot weld. It's just gonna be a one second blast. This is what you wanna see. Nice spot weld on about 50% of each of the panels and a real nice shallow crown there. This will require almost zero blending there. Just a couple hits with a flap disc, you're good to go. And now what we're gonna do is take that spot weld technique we just learned, turn it into a stitch weld. Basically stitch welding is taking a series of spot welds putting them about 50% overlap together. This is what you'd use for your patch panel or your quarters. So let's show you this technique. What you'll see is our initial spot and then our stitch welding, which is essentially a series of spot welds about 50% overlap right here. Nice low crown, make that weld very easy to blend. Final one you're going to use for the uh, sheet metal is plug welding. What we have here is a piece of metal. We got some 316 holes that we drilled or punched into them. What it allows you to do is take two pieces of metal together, join them, and we're going to weld right through that hole there. All right, now what we're gonna do, show you some heavier stuff. We got some 316 plate here, just some cold rolled steel. What we're gonna do is put these together in a T-weld and also a lap weld. What I'm gonna do is show you the gun movement here that will assure proper penetration. A typical gun movement would be a standard push in a straight line here, but to assure proper penetration is heavy material, we're gonna do this. This is exaggerated, but we're gonna do about a 50% overlap, dragging that puddle and the wire back through. All right, now what we just did there, that was what we talked about earlier with just the straight gun movement. The reason I don't like using this one on the heavier materials, you can see we're not assured of any undercut in here and proper penetration. We're back here, when we did the circular motion that we learned, this you're carrying that whole puddle in there and making sure you got proper penetration between both your vertical and your horizontal piece. All right, this is our lap weld. As you can see again, circular motion that we've been using assures you got about 50% penetration in your top piece and in your bottom piece for a structural weld. Now what we're gonna do is show you some of the common mistakes and how to correct them. So let's move on to that. When you experience this, no penetration, almost a raised crater, that's too low of a gas setting or no gas flow at all. Check your tank pressure and your regulator setting. We went ahead, adjusted the regulator to the settings in the manual, and we have very nice spot welds. What this is typical of too high of a voltage setting. Uh, you can see the very large bead that's here. 
obviously blow through right there. So what you want to do is back down your voltage again. Set the machine back up again for the 20 gauge. So we went back, set up the machine as per the chart inside of the welder door. And we have some very nice consistent spot welds. This is typical of too high of a wire speed. You see your bead very proud and domed up on each of these. Actually, there's a piece of wire right there. So you want to go back to your setup chart inside the welder door and again, adjust for your material thickness. So now we went back, set up the machine as per the reference chart, and you can see that we have very consistent low crown spots here. Now we're back to our door here. We've cut out the uh, corroded area there. We have some of our rust encapsulator treating some of the rust behind it. And we've taken a patch. I want to show you a tip on here to make it a little bit easier. So if the panels don't line up exact, we sell the sheet metal kit that gives you these doubler strips. These are one inch pieces of aluminized steel, just in case it isn't cut correctly or you need to shift something as you're going on there. All right, as you can see, we finished the repair here. And what we've done is we've shown you how easy it is to MIG weld. Showed you a couple little tips on there. But what we want to talk about is the performance and the value of these units. What you're getting is a unit that's equivalent to the professionals that are out there at about a third to half the price. The value of this, it's going to pay for itself on the first job. This door, it's about 300 bucks, about the cost of that unit on there. Everything here forward is going to pay you back on this unit. So buy the Eastwood MiG-135 today, start doing your own metal fab and welding and saving money.